Hello, and welcome back to Heiser Media's coverage of the 2023 White Rose Open presented by MVP Disc Sports. This is the back nine of round two at the Blue Course at Cadora State Park. We'd like to thank our coverage sponsors, Cosmic Disc Golf, D-Town Disc Golf, and Reaper Disc Supply. I'm Nathan Johnson, and joined for this coverage is Dan Brooks-Wells. What's up, Dan? Hey, how's it going, man? Also sponsored by Puppies of Fedora State Park. Nice. So, um, starting off on hole 10, sponsored by Glen Rocks Disc Golf Club. This is a par 4, 425. Uh, pretty much a straight tunnel shot, end up a little bit to the right. Uh, this tee was kind of pushed back. There is a shorter tee, but this is a drivable par 4, but very, very tight and technical. Yeah, I think if you've got a big forehand like Dylan, you could probably reach this one. Um, but it is definitely a long hole, and the rough on both sides of the fairway is quite thick. Yeah, Matt Matt has the, the smart play, takes a mid, kind of just pushes it out there. I do remember having a pretty stiff, pretty stiff right-to-left wind. Um, Matt puts it in a great spot. So I think Dylan's going to go for that power forehand. Yeah, I think it's probably the play for him, especially with this wind. It's going to be tough to keep a back in in the middle, so why not get aggressive? Ah, it doesn't quite flip it up enough, and yeah, he's going to show us how tricky that rough is over there on the right-hand side. Yep, I'm, I'm going with an octane. Um, I'm trusting that right-to-left wind, and I'm just trying to get it as far down as I can. Yeah, a little hyzer flip. Yeah, but it doesn't quite turn either. You're going to be over there as well. Yeah, not not happy with that. Looking back, just pitch up a putter or a mid like Hammer did. It's just not worth it for me. Yeah, it's it's when you get up to this hole, it's it's just right there. You can almost see the basket from the tee pad. That's a very fortunate break for Tyler to keep him in the fairway. That would that would have leaked out left, but it is very tempting to go for. Um, but like you said, I just don't think the risk reward makes it worth it especially when it's really such a simple birdie if you just play two putter shots and that's really well done from Tyler. Yeah, he he takes advantage of that break and you know because the pole is so short, he's able to just toss one up there and park it. Yeah, Pierce Hammer just going to There's really just one tree in the way. That's that one right there. He scoots it right past it and easy birdie for him as well. Let's see what kind of lie you and Dylan are dealing with over here. Yeah, I, I got I got stuck in this bush and uh just trying to throw it really high on a lot of Anheuser and just got over on it a little bit too much. And not a bad shot, though. I mean, to have a circle two look from over there definitely could be a lot worse. Yeah, I, I was a little disappointed. You know, looking back, I th should have thrown something a little bit more overstable to flex out. But you see Dylan's in, a, in an even rougher spot. He's going with a with a Forehand cup. cut roller, and he throws that perfectly. Yeah. Wow, leaks a little bit at the end, but... Again, to get in the circle from over there is just, with that shot, it's super technical, super impressive. So, it's so good. It's really good. So let's see if you can save the birdie from maybe 50 feet or so. Ah, good effort, just a little right. Yeah, and that, that, that feels like a bogey. You know, you really want the three. Yeah, I think this would be a Pro Tour par three at, like, Northwood Black, you know? Yeah. Um, obviously for local courses like this they're not going to call it that but um, definitely feels like you're going to lose strokes to the field on a hole like this but par is not the worst thing in the world there's still plenty of plenty of opportunities to score left i mean like we saw in the front nine there's a lot of these short par fours on this course where you know they all kind of feel bad if you don't get them but at the same time you know before the round you're not going to get all of them so you just you just try to pick the strokes up somewhere else absolutely and let people like me make the mistake <laughs> <laughs> so uh going into hole 11 sponsored by central pa disc golf this is a par four 500 feet this is a drivable par four. It's it's really tight. It's really downhill, and uh, the usual play is to throw a putter or a mid down the middle, let it leak a little uh, left. But I have heard uh, rollers that get there, forehands that get there. You know, it, you can do it. Yeah, I mean, this is another one. You can see the basket. It's just straight down the fairway. 
Um, I think the flex forehand would probably be the play that makes the fairway the lar- the widest, something that, you know, right to left and then back to the back to the right. But this is the play you'll see from most folks is just a nice straight putter or mid range. That's a tough tree kick, but keeps him in the middle. And, you know, he's got about 200 to 250 feet from there. Yeah, he's he's, he's perfectly fine. I think I heard of uh, the Delaware Deucer, Mike Moser, throwing a roller during this tournament and actually getting there. That's awesome. Pretty sure. So Dylan is with the strike, which is a fairway driver. He's looking to get way down there, and he just kind of pulls it just a little bit. Yeah, I think a little bit left and a little lower than what he just did would. He could probably get a putt with Dylan's power. It's that downhill just hold that disc straight. Um, I don't hate the idea, but... Tyler, I think he also dissed up, but just pulls this one a little right. And this that's the mistake you can't make. That right rough is also very thick, um, as is a common theme on this course. So if you're going to go slow, you got to go a little bit more stable than you'd normally throw just to make sure that you finish left of it. Absolutely. I, I ended up going with the hex, and I get a little sneaky, but that's all right. It doesn't matter how you get there. That's a fairway hit, and uh, can't be upset with it. No. Especially after doing what I did on the last hole, I'm, I'm happy to have a, a little bit of fortune right there. For sure. Dylan with his maybe like fourth step out backhand of the day. Uh, and a nice tree kick there to keep him in the middle. Uh, that could have got pretty bad over there on the right. There is actually a road over there too that's out of bounds. Probably tough to get to, but in play. Hammer with this little forehand. You have to be careful because the basket comes up quick. This, there's a lot of skip as you can see and the basket's elevated uh, there's a little bit more elevation than you can kind of see there but hammer does a really good job to control the speed on that and lands it nice and soft yeah what are you going with here this is my entropy it's uh, just like slower than my than my pyro because I, I really want it to just sit and as you can see I I kind of let the angle get away from me and it does not sit yeah, tough. it's just tough to get something to stop on this hole. It's just it's just enough, just downhill enough that your disc just wants to kind of keep going. And then once you get down there, as Tyler's going with some sort of overhand, and if that didn't clip those limbs up there, I think he would have had a putt, which would have been really impressive. Yeah, I mean, it was looking, it was tracking, man. It was looking really good and just knocked down in its prime. Dylan, Dylan does the, uh, the forehand thing. Surprised he didn't make that one, but uh, he's under the basket. Yeah, definitely not one you want to run downhill on an elevated basket, but that is one you want to run. Really nice putt from yourself from about circle's edge to uh, grab the birdie after the upshot leaked a little right. Yeah, ha- happy to hit that one for sure. And hammer right, right and around hammer range. Yep, 25 feet, put it on the pole. That's very well done. Very cool. This this tee shot has got to be one of the more fun tee shots to throw, and I think people get amped to throw it. And as as Tyler's cleaning up, oh no, just leaked a, out. Yeah, that's another one of those 50-50 putts that just on an elevated basket tends to catch up probably a little less than fifty fifty. Well, hopefully he'll be able to bounce back. Absolutely. So hole 12, sponsored by Home Again Disc Golf. This is another par 4, 442 feet. So you see a common theme of tight, wooded, short par 4s. Um, you can chew off a lot here with a, with a driver and get up into this gap. But uh, this is very, very technical. Even if you have a good tee shot, the upshot is still kind of tough. Yeah, definitely a very tight upshot. So... It definitely behooves you to try to bite off a little more off the tee, I think. But any there, you'll see up here on the fairway, there's a short tee pad, and I think that's about 260 into the basket. So anything past that will give you a good opportunity. Hammer, this one leaks out early left, but looks like he got a fortunate kick there to keep him near the middle. Yeah, I, uh, I'm going with the octane. I'm doing what you said. I'm trying to bite off a lot, because if I'm going to hit this gap, I want to get some distance. So I don't like having a far up shot on this one. And uh, first goal, hit the gap. Succeeded on that, hit a later tree, but that made its way up the fairway plenty enough to where you'll be able to make something work from there. 
you can see Dylan trying to feel the wind. It's definitely swirly. I mean, it was it was really hard to predict, as I'm sure you know. Yeah, back in these woods, it's just there's so many trees and weird brush, and you can always feel and he, you, as you can especially hear the wind, you know, whipping through these trees. It's just it's yeah, it's very hard to tell exactly which direction it's coming from. Not to pass over Dylan, who had a really nice shot. Tyler leaves it just a little high and uh, fades out, but seems seems like he's going to be all right over there. Yeah, he'll be able to make something work. Probably a pretty tight hyzer from there, but yeah, so there's that tee pad to Hammer's left. So he's probably about 270 to the pin from here, but it's a very tight line. He's going with a turnover forehand. This looks like it's leaking a little right, so that's going to come up a bit short, um, but... It should be an easy par. Yeah, and something nobody really thinks about um, until it actually happens is there is that road over there, and you can, if you get through all the stuff, you can leak OB over there. It's very rare, but it can happen. So I'm, I'm going with my reactor here. Uh, it's a little uphill, and I just pull it a little bit. Not happy with that at all. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's tough. That's definitely, after a, a solid drive, this is one you'd like to get up and down but there's just there's so many trees it's it's and it's a very straight shot the biggest gap is just straight at the basket which uphill forehand like this is is just tough to keep a disc straight for you know 280 feet or so right dylan dylan kind of did the opposite of me came out a little early catches a tree and again i mean you're, you're really looking at like a eight to ten foot gap that we're trying to hit and dylan tries to throw another one in yeah not a bad effort really and it stays close too so pretty nicely done tyler this is his third about he's trying to throw this one in off the pole wow what a shot how am i supposed to live up to this how is how is am i supposed to live up to these runs <laughs> i know this is like the third or fourth time you've been you know big putted or big throw throw in i don't even know what the what the word is but maybe 80 footer for birdie wind kind of yeah. messing with it yeah you know just not too upset with a par on this one honestly it could be worse yep i can tell you firsthand it can definitely be worse oh, no. <laughs> no i just i just took a bucky <laughs> just nothing too terrible hammer he's gonna have to go flick roller around the outside and catches a nice little tree backstop there to keep him close to save his par yeah it's that that tree, that tree catch was nice. I'm, I'm sure he would have been fine no matter what, but a, a 20 to 25 footer for par, for par is can be a little nervy. Yeah, I I think he probably would have been fine. You're right, but still, you'll you'll never complain about a tap in. No. So a couple guys cleaning up. Looks like this one's going to be a par frame across the board on hole 12. Yeah, that's that's what I would usually think for this hole, to be honest. Maybe maybe one bogey, one birdie, but pars are fine. And uh, hole 13, sponsored by Daddy Disc Golf. This is a par 3, 178. And I don't even know if this is the shortest one, but it is a short par 3. It's kind of a straight gap that leads to downhill. So this one is also really about speed control. You can kind of see the top of the basket there. Um, but again, speed control and making sure you don't rush past it. Yep, this is this is a great hole. I think every course in the world needs holes like this, like 200 feet straight shot. Take out your, you know, depth putter or mid range of choice, and just give yourself. Uh, and yeah, there's a hammer. He looks like he went with the mid range and just kind of leaks a little long. Yeah, so you know, we we were uh, kind of watching the the camera woman. And uh, we saw her turn, and we all thought that was going to be parked. And it's just really fast green. So I, I decided to disc, throw a little bit more over stable, throwing the stabilizer, and I'm throwing nose up and just trying to really just softly land it in. Yeah, it comes up a little short, but yeah, I like that play. Put a little bit of flex on the disc and try to control the pace at which it comes into the green is a nice way to, to slow it down. Dylan's throwing his berg here. Any shot that he feels he can throw too far, he throws his berg, and that's really well done. Yeah, almost gave it a, another run there. Came up a little left, but very clean shot. 
Tyler to round out the card. This looks like it's flipping a little, but it sneaks through very nicely. That'll be a tap in birdie for him. Very good. Yeah, like we said, Hammer went a little deep. This from just outside the circle and hmm. ah, just leaves it a little low. Didn't quite commit. There's those swirly winds we were kind of talking about. Very gusty. It gets it gets into your head, you know. You you don't know if you can do your regular putting stroke or it just it just plays with you. Yeah. It's also one of those things. Oh man, it's still interesting. Just kind of wobbled out of his hand there, maybe. It's one of those things you're like, do I wait? Do I try to wait it out? You know, maybe this gust will end. But then once you start waiting, then it just like gets more windy. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. It's like, and then you're just like, all right, I'll just put it. And then, then you just, then you rush it. And uh, it's just no fun. Or at least that's, that's how I play disc golf. I mean, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure a lot of people play it like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So you're the last in the group here. Nicely done. That's a good bird. So only one birdie on the card. Or no, Tyler had one too. That's right. He did, yeah. Moving on to hole 14. This is sponsored by ND Sites. This is a par three, 224 feet. It's uh, two gaps. There's like a wide hyzer gap. That's a little bit tougher to get to the basket. And then there's more of a straight gap. And uh, if you hit the straight gap, you're probably going to be inside the circle. So I think that's what most people go for. Yeah, you can pretty much throw the same disc that you threw on the last hole. Um, maybe maybe throw a putter if you threw a mid range on the previous hole, but wow, that's a tough that's a tough tough tree to hit there. But it's a, a little tighter though. Very similar shot shape. See, Tyler does the same thing, and we're not feeling good. Yeah, I mean anything any hole under two hundred fifty feet, no matter the shape, you're you want to get it right there you got to find a way to give yourself a putt so right doesn't feel good to miss the gap hammer cor corrects the other way yeah a little over correction just pulled it a little bit yeah. let's see if dylan can can figure out how to hit this gap learn from us dylan right, looks good so far Oh, and maybe a nice tree there to keep him close. I mean, I'm sure it wouldn't have went too deep, but this basket is elevated. It's worth noting. So, you know, if you go deep, you have quite of an uphill putt coming back. Tyler, that that got a little bit more of a skip than I thought. That was a really good upshot. Yeah, really nicely done. There's a bunch of roots around this basket, so you can sometimes get some weird ground action, but... He was able to stay close. You'll try to replicate his line. I tried. A little sneaky there. <laughs> yeah, that that was one I, I'm not I'm not proud of. Um, I definitely created my own route on that. But uh, yeah. I'll take it. It worked. It worked. You'll take a par putt after that drive. Amory's lining up a little, maybe inside forehand, or is he going to go outside? He's going to go outside. Buttery. Nice angle control there. Slide it up there. I think really that. That's my favorite shot. Like that scramble from a knee, just like floaty right to left, you know, Anheuser forehand. I'm with you. Nice par putt from you there from maybe 20, 25 feet uphill. Definitely want to put those uphill putts on the pole. Mm -hmm. It's like we said, these baskets can be finicky if you're a little left or right. Dylan, he's going to here for the only birdie of the group. Nice. Nicely done. Yeah, this is this is one like you said. You you want to have a putt at it, and uh, getting a stroke on the card, it's got to feel like a almost like a gift. I mean, he he executed, and and we didn't. So good on him. Well done. Good par save there, from Tyler. But yeah, you're right. Only three birdies on these past two holes, coming in at both of them under 250 feet. Um, it's definitely a bit surprising. But that's it's tough. You're playing on camera, coming in the second round of the day, maybe a little tired. It's uh, hard to focus up and, and execute. Okay, hole 15, sponsored by Gripper and Ripper Disc Golf. This is a par four, 442. 
This one plays a straight and then dog leg to the right. And you can see it's kind of on a slant the whole way. My, I like to throw a straight shot off the tee and kind of have a straight shot into the basket. Um, I think really big arms can throw like a turnover shot and get there. You know, Dylan might have the power of a forehand to be able to maybe get to inside 100 feet. Yeah, this is a tricky forehand, though, off the tee because of that slope of the fairway. Um, you know, for you can obviously push it too straight like he did, but if your just starts to fade out too early, it's just going to skip down that hill. So hard to keep it in the fairway with the forehand. I definitely like the backhand like you're throwing here, just something a little understable that drifts to the right. Just finishes straight. Oh, and a nice little kiss there off the tree to keep you in the middle. Yeah, look, looking back at this, I remember last year I threw a mid, and uh, I wish I would have done it again. That the, the back comes up really fast. Yeah, it definitely does. Tyler's getting aggressive. Yeah, he, he, he corrects off of me, and, I mean, he gets it way down the fairway. Great shot. Yeah, I think if those trees that he just barely missed were not there, this would be a reachable much more reachable in two. Like, I think you'd see a lot more people getting aggressive, but those trees are just smack in the middle of the fairway, like right at the point where you want your disc to start turning right, and it just kind of de decentivizes uh, getting aggressive. Yeah, and, and you see Hammer here. I think that's textbook. Like, that's really what people are going for, just a late flip up and turn. Yeah, nice and low, never, never going to leave the fairway. Um, just gives him a nice, probably 200-foot upshot into the green. Dylan's trying to get tricky here. I don't know if that was supposed to be a roller, but it looked like it cut rolled. No, nah, he it, it hit the right side trees. He just let oh, okay. it go. Yeah, a little off timing. and I kind of put mine a little too high and faded off a lot earlier than I wanted it to. Yeah, it's a, that's a, this is a tough forehand into this green, um, especially with the slope and just the placement of the trees. Um, I'm I love touch forehands, but I think even I would throw probably a straight backhand here. Um, it's just going to be tough to keep the disc close to the basket. As hammer, maybe a fortunate tree. Eh, probably about probably didn't make a difference. Kept him around circle's edge. He yeah, we were talking about it afterwards. Ooh, he almost threw that in. Wow. But, uh, hammer and I were talking about it afterwards. He he wanted it definitely a little bit more to the left, but he he wished he would have missed it and had he might have might have had a closer putt. And here's Dylan trying to get his percentages up again. Uh, I, I I wouldn't call that a, uh you know it was a little far. We we're not going to count that against you, Dylan. That was that was a tough shot. All right, that's fine. This one though, I think he should throw the forehand all day. <laughs> he should he should give it another go. Probably what sixty feet uphill, low ceiling. It's going to be tough to get it there. Yeah, just kind of pulls it a little bit. Yeah, he was he seemed to be in a tough spot on uh, every throw there, so rough hole, but we'll get back into it. Yeah, here's Hammer for Birdie now after that tree kept him right around circle's edge. Oh, just a little low, kicks off the side. It was a good run. Oh, here's you. This will actually give you the lead temporarily if you can connect here. Nicely done on the stripe. Yeah, ha happy to get that one after a uh, fortunate kick and not the greatest upshot, so fortunate to get a putt. And uh, here's Tyler, get his birdie. Very nice. Nicely done. Definitely a, a more standard way to play the hole. Just two, two solid backhands and can your putt. So yeah, bogey for Dylan. I'll drop him out of the lead and uh, looking good for you, Dan. Yeah, um, I'm. I'm like you. I don't. I don't take a look at the the card, so I don't really know what's going on. But hole uh, 16, sponsored by Niche Bags. This is a par four, 446. This is straight and then a dog leg right once again. It plays a little bit more uphill, not much, but a little bit more uphill um, than the other one. And uh, you just want a clean drive, and it gives you a pretty good upshot if you get clean. Yep, definitely forehand is the play off the tee here. Um, like it looks like you're lining up, but those backside tree, you definitely want to make sure that your disc does not flip. You want to keep something on flat to hyzer because those backside bushes can come in pretty quickly. 
as you looks like you caught that one tree still a fine shot you can still get up and down from there but it's nice if you can fade just in front of that one tree that you hit yeah that that seems you know tyler got a little high um i don't know if that kick was good or bad but i think i think everyone is kind of aiming at, at least i do i aim at the tree that i hit and if you you hit it you hit it and if you miss it you miss it yep i agree hammer he likes the backhand that's super pretty a little flip up turn scoots just past that one tree yeah it's prime position he's been throwing that m4 that's that same mid-range he loves that thing and uh dylan dylan is a little a little angry right now after the last hole and he smashes this <sighs> man i think dylan if he goes to the right misses that tree on the right side he could maybe get a jump putt at this hole like he has the forehand it's it's far it's uphill but i think he could probably get like a hundred footer at it he he probably can I, i'm really upset that that hit a tree I, I was telling him i really wanted to see what that was going to do yeah tyler's just trying to scramble there takes a kick yeah there's a little there's a couple different ways you can approach this basket looks like you're lining up the left hand side um, if you were on the other side of the tree, you could also go with a, a backhand visor as well. Um, but that was a super great upshot to put yourself in drop-in birdie range. Yeah, happy happy to have that open of a gap after hitting that tree. Camera's trying to do the same exact thing. Super smooth again from him. Mm. Distance control. Scoots a little deep, but that's definitely within his putting range. Yeah, here's the back side of the fairway that we were talking about and um, that comes up pretty quick. So looks like Dylan's going to try to maybe go straight at it with a Berg from a knee, scoots oh, yeah. it up. Wow, that's a great shot. So good. Being able to throw from a knee is such an advantage, and he, he does it really well. Yeah, I, I would never consider throwing a backhand from a knee. That's, that is wildly impressive. Hammer from uh, Hammer Range. Very nice. On the stripe. Well done. Yeah, it definitely, it gets a little windy back here with uh, the road and and it just, you know, annoying gusts here and there. Mm -hmm. Just got to make sure you take your time, commit to the putt. Nicely yeah, done there from Tyler. Absolutely. What a great putt. Um, there are some places on this course where there's a lot of crossover, so you can see, you know, there's other cards around. So you got to work with the distractions as well. You know, that can always be a factor. Yep, for sure. All right, moving on to hole 17. This is a par three, 207 feet. Uh, I think there's OB long, but that doesn't usually come into play. Um, this is just throw your most confident putter or mid, and you really want to get this one. Yeah, it's, you know, 207 feet, pretty much just dead straight, fade out at the end. I'm going with my trusty stabilizer, which is actually new to the bag this week, and you can see why. Yeah, I think I think it I think it's earned a spot to stick around. That was that was smooth. Hammer, he's lining up. Trying to replicate that same line. Yep, just down the middle. I mean, automatic. Textbook. Yeah, I mean, this is probably, this might be, well, it didn't score as the easiest, but it definitely feels like one of the easier holes on the course. It's it's just kind of a weird distance, though. Um, you definitely don't want to go long. There's bushes probably like 10 feet behind the basket. Um, that'll make your putt a little tricky if you give it, you know, as Dylan will probably show us here shortly. Um, but other than that, it's pretty much... Uh, wide open straight backhand shot yeah you're i guess I, I haven't really thought about that but you're absolutely right the difficulty of the hole is the guarded green you know unless you're within 15 feet you're probably putting around something yeah Don't that putt be good i had that same putt it, it there's the tree that you could see is like was literally right in line with the basket just a mm -hmm. really tough place to be tyler he's looks like he has a tough putt as well these, there's just so many little oh and he hits the band wow what an effort about that so many just little twizzles and twigs and 
leaves to get in your way. It's just very annoying to go deep. Definitely want to put it right about there is would be ideal. Yep, and Hammer here is going to clean up, clean up his birdie. And uh, you can see the wind. The wind's coming in, and he's looking up and around like, where is this coming from? We just, it's hard to tell. No problem. Yeah, luckily he's close enough. Not really going to make a difference. Um, I'm sure Tyler and Dylan disappointed with the par, but it is what it is. Just one hole left. Hopefully they can finish strong. Yeah, like that. I mean, it's always unfortunate to miss a hole you, you really want to get, but you got to just focus up and finish it out. And uh, we are finishing on an awesome hole. This is hole 18, 326. It's two gaps you can hit, one on the left, one on the right. You can you can throw a forehand or a backhand. I think for the right-hander, the backhand is the preferred play because of the slope of the hill. And uh, I'm going with my Tesla. And, you know, you're at the end of two rounds, and I'm like, just throw it hard enough. So I put a little flex on it, and I was pretty happy, happy with this one. Yeah, gave yourself a little downhill putt for the birdie. I like the flex line. It's it's kind of makes the fairway a little bit bigger. I think um, down the left side, you'll also see a lot of people take um, just kind of the the hyzer flip down the right hand side. Um, both are both gaps are probably the, about the same size. So Hammer looks like he's going to try to prove me wrong and go hyzer flip down the left. But I think that was just an early release. Um, that one just a little low, got caught up. Um, probably just lay that one up for par. Yeah, Dylan, Dylan, you know, he's got a little bit bigger of an arm. We're throwing fairway drivers. You know, the end of two rounds, he's throwing a mid. Looks like he barely throws it. But uh, yeah. gets a nice kick. Oh, wow. Yeah, all the way up into the circle, that one. That could have been a lot worse, um, pulling that one to the right side. But, yeah, to have a birdie putt, I'm sure he will be grateful. Tyler, he's... Yeah, I think he's aiming for the right-hand side, too, and that one just leaks out a little left. So that'll be a tr tricky scramble from those those bushes. But Hammer, he's maybe 70 feet slightly downhill. Let's see if he gives this one a run. No, just laying it up. Yeah. He's content to head into the third round. He'll be staying on the lead card at 16 under par. So no, no reason to get aggressive there. No. He was just, in a tough spot. Tyler, that was unfortunate to be that far in, but it was a decent pitch out and gives himself a, a putt to save. Just a bit high. I'm just, sure not the round Tyler wanted at, you know, finishing yeah, he, at 10 under for the tournament. But Yeah, a, a couple of putting woes for him. Hopefully he can clean it up in the third round. Really solid putt there from Dylan. After the good break, he's able to capitalize. Gets him to 16 under par. Yeah, I mean, I, I said it in the first video, I'll, I'll, I'll say it again. Uh, everyone's going to get good and bad breaks. It's just a matter of how you deal with them. You got to make sure that you clean up your your uh, bad breaks and take advantage of your good breaks. So Dylan does that the way you're supposed to. Yeah. Now you, from about 20, 25 downhill for the birdie, and you're able to connect. Super solid putt, super solid round. You're two strokes clear of the card. We'll see where that puts you in comparison to the rest of the field in a second here, but I'm thinking it's looking pretty good. Yeah, happy happy with my round. Um, again, I don't, especially during the, the second round, I don't usually like to look at the scorecard, so I, I didn't really know what was going on and uh, feel very fortunate to be where I'm at. Yeah, super well done. Still plenty of golf to play. Uh, after two, like we said, you have a two stroke lead over the field. Nathan Lofman with a 12 under par hot round that'll mm -hmm. jump him up to a tie for fourth and place him on the lead card for the final day yeah welcome welcome nathan yeah it's thank you to our supporting sponsors the norse gods as well as the patreon family for making this coverage possible make sure to subscribe because you are not going to want to miss the exciting conclusion to this tournament round three coming out soon see you guys there